。咁可能你会问啦，哇，两 Sir 呢个技巧好似好高级、哦，无啦啦点会谂到呢个答案啊？唔系噶，你以前学过噶啦。哪里？二零二三年 Paper One B 第九条题目系有关于科学探究嘅，今次我哋要探究嘅对象咧就系士多啤梨啦。咁我哋先睇下幅图啦，士多啤梨嘅外观啦，同埋士多啤梨嘅纵切面，我哋会发现啦，士多啤梨嘅表面咧有啲一粒粒，就叫做瘦果。原来瘦果咧就系果实嚟嘅，即系唔系成粒士多啤梨先系果实，系呢啲一粒粒先系果实。所以啦，士多啤梨咧，我哋會稱之為假果。咁原因就係在於咧，佢又唔同平時嘅橙啊、香蕉啊，整個果實個 fruit 咧，係由一個脂肪壁 ovary wall 所去發展而成嘅。士多啤梨呢嚿嘢啦，由士多啤梨花嘅花托嘅組織所發育而成嘅。所以啦，佢就唔係由脂肪壁所組成，所以我哋就稱之為假果啦。咁呢個概念，我哋如果有時間啦，我就再拍段片去講一講啦。咁而家啦，我哋睇返題目咯噃。整個探究其實研究緊嘅呢，就係喺個瘦果，佢喺整個士多啤梨嘅發展嘅過程當中，擔當住啲咩嘅角色呢？咁我哋就嚟睇一睇個實驗嘅裝置咯喎。我哋有三個裝置，裝置一呢，就喺個士多啤梨表面嘅瘦果呢，係保持完整嘅，保留晒喺度嘅。而第二個裝置呢，我哋就喺第一日將士多啤梨表面嘅瘦果呢，就移除晒佢。而第三個裝置呢，我哋都係喺第一日將士多啤梨表面嘅瘦果移除佢，然後啦，我哋就有規律地去噴灑返啲生長素 o x y 喺個士多啤梨嘅表面嘅。跟住啦，我哋睇下二十日之後嘅結果啦。喺第一個裝置呢，士多啤梨係變大嘅；第二個裝置呢，士多啤梨係冇變大嘅。而第三個裝置咧，士多啤梨都係有變大，雖然個形狀就唔似一般嘅士多啤梨上闊下窄，好似一個尖端嘅形狀，但係佢都係變大咗嘅。跟住啦 ，Part A One 咯，我哋就要做比較啦。題目咧就想我哋比較下唔同裝置啦，去得出不同嘅推斷咯。咁呢個題目啦，自不然就係考翻我哋全視技能嘅比較結果啦。然後基於個結果咧，就係、是、作出不同嘅推論啦。咁我哋就嚟做一擊破咯。第一個裝置對第二個裝置，每一個裝置我哋都要諗嘅就係、是、啊，究竟個 I V D V 係乜嘢咧？咁今次啦，個 D V 就係睇下個士多啤梨有冇變大啦，係嘛？佢 appearance 或者佢個 size 有冇改變咯？第二個 I V 咧，就係佢哋兩者不同之處啦。今次喺第一個裝置同埋第二個裝置之間嘅 I V 咧，就係啲瘦果有冇存在？第一個裝置啲瘦果係存在嘅，第二個裝置啲瘦果係移除曬，即係唔存在啦。咁我哋睇翻個結果咯。裝置一有瘦果會變大，第二個裝置冇瘦果唔會變大。咁即係話瘦果會唔會係同嗰個士多啤梨變大係有關係㗎？跟住啦，就到第二同第三個裝置嘅比較啦。第二個裝置冇曬啲瘦果，第三個裝置都係冇曬啲瘦果，不過我哋有噴灑到生長素，即係話第二同第三個裝置佢哋相差嘅呢，就係、是、有冇噴灑生長素呢一個荷爾蒙啦。咁我哋發現啦，咦，冇噴灑到仍然都係咁細粒。有噴灑到，咦，變大粒咗喎！咁根據第二同第三個裝置嘅結果咧，我哋就能夠推斷一下啦，會唔會生長素呢一款嘅植物荷爾蒙係能夠導致到個士多啤梨變大㗎？我哋就有一二同埋二三嘅比較咯。去到第一同第三嘅比較啦，問題就嚟啦。第一同第三嘅比較，咦，第一個裝置就係有曬啲瘦果。第二個裝置就冇曬瘦果 ，OK， 咁咪即係比較下有瘦果同冇瘦果啦，係咪？你話唔係喎，仲有另一樣嘢喎，兩 Sir， 三個裝置仲有噴灑埋呢個生長素喎，係咯，嗱咁咪即係話第一個冇噴灑生長素，第二個有噴灑生長素，咪即係話我哋又要比較瘦果有冇出現啦，跟住我哋又要比較有冇噴灑生長素喎。咁即係話，我哋喺第一同第三個裝置，我哋比較緊兩樣嘢。喎。第一就係比較下究竟瘦果存唔存在啦。二啦就係比較下究竟有噴灑同冇噴灑到生長素對個士多啤梨大細有咩影響。喎。喺兩個 I V 嘅情況底下
，佢咪就系一个不公平嘅测试咯？如何有推论啊？<音樂>所以啦，第一同第三个装置要比较嘅话咧，其实系冇推论可言嘅，因为佢多过一个 I V Independent Variable 独立变化。同意啦，佢就冇推论，亦都冇结论啦。咁我到第二部分啦，就問下我哋咯。基於個結果啦，就要我哋去提出一個假説，去解釋返：咦，點解個士多啤梨會變大嘅呢？咁呢個題目啦，又係考我哋傳世技能就就係去作出假説咯喎。劍奇凡都提多一次啦，假説你咩嚟嘅呢？就係、是、我哋為咗一個現象嘗試作出解釋啦。仲有返裝置一同裝置二。裝置二同裝置三，我哋我哋就會諗下啦。究竟會唔會係因為啲瘦果係能夠生產生長素，而從而啦就令到個士多啤梨變大咧？咁呢個題目有咩變奏咧？就叫你啦，基於個實驗嘅結果啦，就叫你作出一啲推論或者假説啦，從而啦，然後啦，再去解釋你嘅答案嘅。咁啊，三分啦，咁啊，當然啦，頭兩分就係利用翻個實驗嘅結果啦，一對二，二對三，得出啲咩嘅推論咧，然後啦，再作出一個假説啦。而一對三呢個裝置咧，喺呢條題目底下係唔需要講噶嘛，咁所以咪減翻一分俾你，咪兩分加一分，咁咪三分咯。跟住啦，我哋去到 part 呢個第三部分咯，我哋咧就多咗一個裝置啦。喺呢個裝置當中咧，就係個士多啤你分咗上半部同下半部，上半部咧啲瘦果仍然存在嘅。而下半部嘅瘦果就係將佢清走咗佢，而去到二十日之後咧，我哋就睇下整個士多啤梨嘅外觀啦。咁我哋發現啦，士多啤梨嘅上部咧係有發育變大嘅，而士多啤梨嘅下部咧就係冇發育冇變大嘅。咁題目就問我哋啦，從實驗設計嘅角度嚟睇，究竟第四個裝置同第一同第二個裝置相比起有啲咩嘅好處呢？嗱，會發現啦，第一個裝置就係所有嘅瘦果係保留，第二個裝置就所有嘅瘦果被移除，而第四個裝置就係天一半地一半，一半移除，一半冇移除。整條題目就係考翻我哋有關於設計實驗嘅概念啦，就係比較翻實驗裝置一二四究竟有啲咩嘅分別咯。咁過往都有唔同題目去比較翻唔同嘅實驗裝置嘅，咪睇下片温阿書啦。今次題目最刻意去考我哋嘅咧，就係、是、有關於控制變項嘅重要性。咁控制變項有咩重要性呢？就係、是、想去話俾我哋聽，整個實驗嘅結果係單單基於我哋研究緊嗰個因素所導致嘅。咁我哋啦，比較一、二、四啊，其實有啲咩嘅特別呢？就係、是、想去消除翻喺裝置一同埋二個士多啤梨個別差異，咁你會發現啦，裝置一我哋係用緊一粒士多啤梨，裝置二係用緊另一粒嘅士多啤梨，其實係總有人挑戰你噶嘛，佢哋可能會講啦，喂，嗱裝置一呢粒士多啤梨變大係因為佢生得健康咯，裝置二嘅呢粒士多啤梨佢變唔到大係因為佢唔健康咯。唔關啲瘦果事㗎，其實係睇佢健唔健康㗎啫，或者有其他因素㗎。但如果啦，你將一同二擺埋一齊嗱，而家啦，你要諗辦法將裝置一同裝置二結合，喎，就變成裝置四啦。OK， 天一半地一半，上半部保留瘦果，下半部唔保留瘦果。嗱，我用緊同一粒士多啤梨㗎，佢哋嘅健康情況應該一樣㗎，係咪？咁而家啦，嗱上面有瘦果，下面冇瘦果，跟住生出嚟啦，嗱有瘦果就变大，冇瘦果冇变大，咁咪即係话瘦果应该有啲巧妙喺当中啦啩？咁呢个呢，就係消除返喺个体之间嘅差异啦。咁其实呢个实验仲有多一样嘢我哋可以做㗎喎，係将第四个装置再加多一个装置，就叫第五个装置。四同第五个装置冇辦法，梗系用另一粒嘅士多啤梨啦。但係嗰粒士多啤梨就反翻轉嚟做咯，我哋喺個士多啤梨嘅上部咧就清曬啲瘦果去，而喺士多啤梨嘅下部咧我就保留翻啲瘦果，咁你就明我做乜嘢啦？上面而家冇曬瘦果喎，咁上面咪唔變大咯，下面有瘦果喎，下面咪變大咯。嗱，呢個係正常嘅推斷嚟噶嘛。咁如果我哋有埋呢個 treatment five 咧，我哋就更加能夠又清除埋人哋嘅挑戰啦。因為人哋嘅挑戰可能都會講噶嘛，哎呀呢、这個 upper part 啊，佢近呢個定定啊嘛，佢咪咪能夠產生呢個生長素咯，咁下面冇噶嘛，咁所以佢咪唔會生咯。OK， 我反轉嚟做啊，而家下面有瘦果，上面冇瘦果啊，有瘦果咪變大咯，冇瘦果咪唔變大咯，咁咪又可以清除多一個挑戰咯，係咪啊？
。咁可能你会问啦，哇，两 Sir 呢个技巧好似好高级、哦，无啦啦点会谂到呢个答案啊？唔系噶，你以前学过噶啦，就喺光合作用嗰一课，想去探究一下，究竟光对于光合作用系咪真系咁重要？咁你可以選擇用兩塊葉嘅，一塊葉有晒光，另一塊葉攞啲紙冚住佢，佢就冇晒到光。咁但係人哋都可以挑戰你㗎嘛？喂，兩塊葉嚟㗎，一塊葉健康，一塊葉唔健康，咪導致到佢哋一塊就做到光合作用，一塊咪做唔到囉。OK， 你好嘢，我就將兩個裝置結合成為一塊葉，一塊葉當中我有一啲部分遮住咗，另一啲部分冇遮住，我攞呢個黑色紙遮住咗塊葉嘅某一部分，咁佢咪吸收唔到光，咁佢照計佢咪做唔到光合作用咯。咁啊，呢啲照到光咪做到光合作用咯。嗱，同一塊葉嚟噶，健康情況應該一樣噶。佢哋有咩分別啊？就係、是、照到光同照唔到光啦，係咪？另一個啦，就係斑葉啦 ，variegated leaf 係咪啊？佢有綠色嘅部分同埋唔係綠色嘅部分。再加埋張黑紙，就一次過研究曬究竟光啦同埋葉綠素啦，對於光合作用有幾咁重要啦？你都可以選擇嘅，一塊就係綠色嘅葉，另一塊就係唔係綠色嘅葉，人哋都可以挑戰你㗎，唔關嗰啲顏色事㗎，都係睇佢健唔健康㗎咋。只要嗰塊葉係健康呢，佢白色佢都做到光合作用㗎。好 ，OK， 咁咪搵塊斑葉俾你睇下囉。有綠色嘅部分，有白色嘅部分，再加埋張黑紙遮住。再做 i o d i n test 就一目了然啦，系咪？咁所以呢个技巧咧，大家以前学过噶，只系而家用士多啤梨嚟问你，你唔记得咗啫嘛？对唔住，头先语气重咗少少。咁啊 ，Part B 就要我哋俾个例子啦，就系、是、讲翻生长素点样引致到一个生长嘅反应。然後再講述翻呢個生長反應 is significant 啊嘛，呢、这個生長反應對棵植物嘅重要性嗱，又係講重要性咯，即係講好處喎，係咪啊？咁呢個題目啦，就自不然就考翻生長素對於一棵植物嘅生長反應，或者我哋講嘅向性啦，有啲咩嘅影響啦？咁首先你要講對於棵植物啊嘛，咁植物都有兩大部分啦，一個咧就係枝條嘅部分，另一個就係根部嘅部分。咁所以啦，對於枝條嘅部分。咧就系一个正向光性，对于根部咧就系负向光性。咁知道咗个例子咯，跟住就讲下呢个生长反应对棵植物嘅重要性咯。对于枝条嘅正向光性，就确保到个枝条咧系能够向光生长，吸收光线进行光合作用。呢、这个就系个重要性，做嚟有咩好处啊嘛，大佬？吸光就系整嘢食啊嘛，就系、是、为生存啊嘛。或者啦，你答翻根部嘅负向光性，就确保根部咧系向住土壤入面去成长，因为冇光啊嘛，系咪？啊，咁从而啦就固定到棵植物咯。好，跟住啦就嚟到一点出发啦。今次嘅题目咧就由士多啤梨开始啦，就问翻两样嘢啦，一个科学探究，一个就系生长素。今次嘅题目就要我哋分析数据，作出推论啦。最紧要就系你分唔分得清。邊啲裝置比較係公平測試？邊啲裝置嘅比較係不公平嘅測試？從而啦，係唔會有個推論或者結論去產生得到嘅。題目再問我哋有關於假説啦。咁過往都有好多數據分析嘅題目噶啦，或者 SBA 嘅題目嘅，咁啊快快手睇下片温下書咯。跟住去到生長數啦，自不然就問翻向性啦。我哋正向性同負向性。咁啊，二零一六年嘅呢條 MC 咧，非常之有參考價值。快啲睇下片温。温下书，学翻啲概念佢啦。向性啦，下次亦都可以问下啦，系有关于呢个有方向性嘅生长运动。系今次咧就系喷洒生长素嘅，下次啊就可能问翻你真系有个单质光啊、地心吸力啊呢啲单质嘅刺激，对棵植物嘅成长有啲咩嘅影响咧？咁過往都拍咗一段片呢，有關於四招 K.O. 植物向光性嘅片嘅，咁啊快快手睇下邊温下書咯喎！一棵植物呢，枝條同埋根部，佢哋對於向光性嘅表現有啲咩唔同呢？咁呢個題目啦，仲有啲嘢可以再問下嘅，就係、是、有關於植物繁殖啦。士多啤梨呢，佢一個假果，但係。個果實入面有種子，呢個係不真嘅事實嚟嘅。而對於士多啤梨，佢都紅當當啦，又有汁啦，係咪？咁點樣幫助到佢果實嘅散播啊？種子嘅散播呢？咁過往都有啲 M C 嘅題目咧，俾大家參考翻嘅。
Two to three paper one B question nine is about scientific investigation. We are going to studying is the strawberry. So we have the diagram showing the external appearance of the strawberry and the vertical cut of the strawberry. And then we can see that on the surface of the strawberry, we can we can find the arkin and the arkins they are the fruit. So we know that for the strawberry, they are the false fruit, and the arkin they are the fruit. The strawberry, the fleshy part is from the receptacle of the flower. So it is the false fruit. It's different from what we learned before, just like the orange, the banana, they are the real fruit. So maybe later we make another video about the false fruit. For the whole investigation, we are studying the role of the arkin in the development of the strawberry. So we can see the table, treatment one, two, three. Treatment one, all the arkin remain intact on the strawberry. Treatment 2, all arkins were removed on day 1. And treatment 3, all arkins were removed on day 1. And the strawberry was then regularly sprayed with the auxins. And we can take a look on day 20, the relative size and appearance of the strawberry. On the treatment 1, the strawberry grow bigger. And for treatment 2, not enlarged at all. And the treatment free, the strawberry also enlarge. Although the shape is not regularly like the uh, strawberry, but the size is bigger. So for part one, we need to complete the table to show what deduction can be made by comparing result of the following treatments. One is yeah, treatment one and two, two and three, and one and three. So the question is checking us the synoptic skills data analysis comparison of the result. And based on the result, based on the comparison, we need to make deduction. So let's take a look at treatment one and two. So we need to find out the IV and DV first. For the DV, which is the relative size and appearance of the strawberry, what we are observing, right? And then for treatment one and two, what we are changing. It should be the presence of the arkins. Treatment one, all arkins remain intact. Treatment two, all arkins were removed. So we know that the IV is the presence of the arkin, and then we know that with the arkin, the strawberry grows bigger. Without the arkins, the strawberry did not grow bigger. So it's shown that the arkins they may be responsible for the enlargement of the strawberry. And then treatment two and three. The IV is the spray of the auxin on the strawberry because, because we know that treatments 2 and 3, all the arkins were removed are the same. However, treatment 3, we keep spraying the auxin regularly on the strawberry. So the IV is the spray of the auxin on the strawberry. And then we can compare the result. Without the auxin spray, the strawberry did not grow bigger. But with the regular auxin spray, the strawberry grow bigger. Okay, so it's shown that the auxin is the plant hormone that causes enlargement of the strawberry. So what about treatment 1 and 3? Treatment 1, we have all the arkin on the strawberry surface. Treatment 3, all the arkins were removed. Meanwhile, in the treatment 1, we did not spray the auxin. And in treatment 3, we spray the auxin regularly. You can see that there are two independent variables here. No matter the presence of the arkins or the spray of the auxin on the strawberry. So we know that for the treatment 1 and treatment 3, it is not a fair test. It is not a fair comparison. Therefore, no deduction can be reached by comparing the results of setups 1 and 3 because there is more than one independent variables in the two setups. And for part 2, based on the results, suggest one hypothesis for the enlargement of the strawberry. So this question is checking us the synoptic skills again. It's about making hypothesis. And what is hypothesis? It's a proposed explanation for the phenomenon. Now, what is the phenomenon? The phenomenon is that with and without the arkin, and with or the without the auxin spray. So we combine the result and then we draw this hypothesis. The arkin produced the auxins which caused the enlargement of the strawberry during its development. So for this question, any possible question variation, it may ask you to make the deduction or the hypothesis and explain your answer based on the result. You make the deduction or the hypothesis and then you need to use the comparison of the result to tell me that why you can make this deduction or hypothesis. Tell me why!
because we do not use the treatment one and treatment three comparison, therefore deduct one mark from the three marks. So two plus one, it is three marks. And for part A3, we have one more treatment, treatment four. So for the treatment four, we divided the strawberry into upper part and lower part. On the upper part, the arkins they remain intact, and on the lower part, the arkins are removed. And then we can see that on day 20, upper part, it enlarges. And for the lower part, it did not enlarge. So in terms of the experimental design, what is the advantage of the treatment 4 as compared to treatments 1 and 2? For this question, it's checking us the skills to design the experiment and compare different treatments, treatments 1, 2, and 4. And in this question, it particularly checks us the concept about the controlled variable. What is the importance of the controlled variable? It helps us to ensure that the result of the experiment is due only to the factor under investigation. So the treatment for the advantage is that it can help us to eliminate the individual difference between the strawberries in setups 1 and 2. The logic is that Treatment 1, we use one strawberry. And for treatment 2, actually we use another strawberry, right? Therefore, one strawberry with all the arkin. And the other strawberry without the arkin. So some people, they may challenge our result. They may say that for treatment 1, why the strawberry becomes bigger? Because it is a healthy strawberry. But for treatment 2, why the strawberry did not grow bigger because it is not a healthy strawberry. So actually the factor is about is it healthy or not, but not about the presence of the arkin. You are wrong. Okay, so how can I deal with, handle this challenge? So I combine treatment 1 and treatment 2 to become treatment 4. I use the same strawberry. But on the upper part, I keep all the arkin. And on the lower part, we remove all the arkin, and then we can see the difference. Um, upper part with the arkin, it becomes bigger. For the lower part without the arkin, it does not grow bigger. So that's something we can see, right? So we eliminate the individual difference because there may be individual difference between treatments one and two. Not, not only about the health state, also maybe the growth condition, right? And one more thing we can do is do the treatment five. So treatment five, it just reverse the idea. For the upper part, we remove the arkin. And for the lower part, we keep the arcing. So you can see that I try to deal with another challenge. The people, they may think that, ah, yeah, only the arcing on the upper part can secrete the oxygen. But for the lower part, they cannot. Okay, I reverse the idea. Upper part without arcing, lower part with the arcing. So actually, what is the result? The result may be that the lower part, it can grow bigger. But for the upper part, without the arkin, so it cannot grow bigger. So we can still handle to deal with the challenge from others. You may think that, wow, this logic is so difficult, Mr. Leung. It seems like that I never think about the individual difference, something like this, in the experiment design. No, no, no. You learned it before. We learned it in the photosynthesis. So when we are studying the need of the light in photosynthesis, so surely we can use two leaves, one leaf with light, another leaf without light, right? So there may be individual difference. Some people may challenge you, oh, whether the leaves they can do the photosynthesis is because it's healthy or it's not healthy. So I combine one and two to become four. I use the same leaf but I use the paper to cover a certain part of the leaf. You can see that this part, this part, and this part, they are exposed to the light. But for the paper, the cover part, it cannot receive the light. So on the same leaf, we do the comparison already, right? It's the same individual. And then the very similar idea, investigation of the need for the light and chlorophyll in photosynthesis. So surely you can use two leaves, one leaf, green leaf, and the other leaf, not green leaf, can be yellow leaf, can be red leaf, whatever. People can also challenge you. Hey, yeah, you are using different types of leaves, ma. So 
it must be different 啦。哎呀 ，you are using different types of leaves 啊嘛。But actually, ah, whether it can undergo the photosynthesis is about the health state. If the leaf is healthy, it can do the photosynthesis. No, no, no. I combine it for the variegated leaf, right? Remember, what is variegated leaf? Some parts is green, some parts are white or are other color, maybe yellow, maybe red. So I use the same leaf and then use the black card to block a certain part of the leaf as well. So make sure that some part with the core field, without the core field, with the light and without the light, I use one individual to perform all the task and compare the result on the same individual. So we can eliminate the individual difference, right? And then for part B, it is a very straightforward question. Give one example of a growth response induced by the auxins, and state its significance to the plant. Is it means the growth response significance to the plants. So for this question, is checking us the effect of the auxin on the growth response, or what we say that the tropism. First of all, we need to point out the particular part of the plants to respond. They are the shoot and the root. So what is the response? Positive phototrophic response in the shoot and negative phototrophic response in the root. And then what is the significance, the importance, the benefit to the plants? So surely we need to recall the idea of the survival. Positive phototrophic response in the shoot ensure the shoot receive more light for photosynthesis. A negative phototrophic response in the root to ensure the root grow into the soil for better anchorage. And let's talk about the curriculum mapping. The question starts from the soil rarity, and then it asks us about the scientific investigation and auxins. For the scientific investigation, it, it checks us the skills to compare the results for the data analysis, and then make deduction. And you have to be able to distinguish the fair test from the not fair test for the comparison. And based on the result, you need to make a proposed explanation, a hypothesis to a certain phenomenon. So there are a lot of questions about the scientific investigation. Watch the video, do some revision. And then for the auxin, surely we talk about the tropism, positive tropism, negative tropism. This MC question, I highly recommend you to watch it again to clarify your concept. And for the tropism, it's about the directional growth movement. This question, we are talking about the auxin spray, but maybe next time it asks you about the unilateral stimulus again. For example, the unilateral illumination. So what about the shoot and root? What is the response and what is the importance for it? And for this question, it doesn't ask that much, but it's also a possible question variation. It's about the plant reproduction. Now we are talking about the strawberry, which is a false fruit, but the idea of the seed or the fruit dispersal, they are the same. Therefore, you can refer to the questions and do some revision.